Research and discovery. Futurists. Bluefin tuna is disappearing from the sea. Demand keeps prices high, which means people will keep fishing bluefin tuna until there's none left. Obviously, this is an unsustainable situation. In Cartagena, in southern Spain, scientists from the EU's Self-Dot Research Project are finding out how to farm bluefin tuna. So, every night in July, they take a boat and go out to collect eggs from two cages containing 60 bluefin tuna. This project aims to make it possible to produce bluefin tuna in the same way as we already produce sea bream, sea bass, turbot and salmon using aquaculture. But this doesn't mean the end of the bluefin tuna fishing. Aquaculture will be a complement of fishing. Here in Malta, the day starts very early for Robert. He is also working on the Self-Dot project. Every morning in July, he goes to the bluefin cages to look for eggs. But last year, he wasn't as lucky as his colleagues. There weren't any eggs. So this year, he's made some changes. This year, we brought the cage into a cove, into a small bay where we hope to have less currents but this year again um, we had a uh, few eggs we got few eggs compared to spain probably because uh, the temperature didn't rise quick enough this year was quite a cold year uh, for the seawater temperature and during the best what we think is the best spawning period for tuna in captivity we had cold temperatures bluefin tuna use light and temperature to know when to reproduce they're also very sensitive to water quality. But those aren't the only difficulties. Bluefin tuna causes another problem. It is a very big and delicate fish. So because of its size, we can't handle it, we can't check it, we can't see what maturation stage it is, like we do with sea bass and sea bream, for example. And uh, for this reason, it causes another problem, which is logistic, how to collect the eggs. Harvesting even small quantities of farmed eggs is really hard because bluefin tuna needs special care all year round. So these scientists are being helped by private companies that were working with tuna even before this project started. We ensure that the fish have perfect living conditions. Also, we ensure that every care is taken to avoid any kind of problem during the egg-laying period. Some of these eggs stay in Spain, and others go to France, Greece and Israel. Scientists use them to learn how to produce a full-grown fish, which is the next step of this project. Germany, Italy and Norway are also taking part in the project. There were fewer eggs being laid in Malta than here in Cartagena, but we have achieved the reproduction of bluefin tuna in captivity. So now that we have shown that it's possible, the next hurdle is breeding bluefin tuna larvae, and that will require a special effort. The challenge is ensuring the survival of the larvae. Last year, scientists managed to keep some of them alive for more than 70 days. Now they're hoping that some of them will grow to at least a kilo, which is really hard to achieve with bluefin tuna. There are all sorts of complex problems, like stress and cannibalism, but they hope that with the right feeding, the problems will be solved. Bluefin tuna grows very fast. This is why they need high-energy food more than other species that we are farming. So we need to give them very high-energy food compared with the food that we give to sea bream or sea bass, for example. But this is also a fish that lays eggs in salt water rather than fresh, so it needs very high-quality water with high concentrations of oxygen.
scientists are optimistic about this project because in the past they've succeeded in breeding other wild fish species in captivity. Bonito, which belongs to the same family as tuna, is smaller so it's easier to handle. And with this species we have a huge achievement. For the first time in the world we have closed the biological cycle of Bonito in captivity. This means we breed fish in captivity from fish bred in captivity. In Malta, Robert's team succeeded in breeding amberjack, which also fetches high prices on the open market. These achievements show the way for bluefin tuna. It's time to take them out of the sea. The immediate next step is to improve the larval survival, but at the same time, in parallel, we have to run towards producing a land-based facility whereby bluefin tuna broodstock can be held and kept in, in, in captivity so that they can breed eggs um, in a better way than they do in the cages. The land-based facility for bluefin tuna will look like this amberjack farm in Malta. Here, the light and the water temperature can be controlled so that the fish live in ideal conditions for reproduction, which is crucial if farming them is to become a reality. We know the origins of farmed fish. We know what we are eating, and this is traceability. We know everything about a farmed fish. Also, farmed fish are of standard quality, so consumers who buy it know exactly what they're buying. Scientists have also been holding a series of blind tastings, and the results are surprising. 50% of people preferred the taste of wild tuna, and 50% preferred the taste of farmed tuna. This is good news, because the only way to supply markets with as much bluefin tuna as they want is via aquaculture, as is now done with salmon and shellfish. With all the effort that's taking place now uh, on bluefin tuna, with everybody's input, and uh, there are some very good experiments going on with the eggs that are now produced from Spain, I think that uh, we will have some progress, and maybe there will be some tuna produced by aquaculture in the near, not so distant future. The hope is that farming bluefin tuna will take the pressure off wild stocks, allowing them to breed in peace so that bluefin tuna doesn't disappear from our seas forever. <laughs>